What if I told you that behind the dazzling parades, the sea of flags, and the resounding cheers of Singapore's National Day celebrations, there's an untold story that pulses with history, aspiration, and a collective spirit? Stay tuned as we bring you on a journey of resilience, vision, and unity that transforms a day of celebration into an extraordinary tale of a nation's evolution. The dramatic expulsion of Singapore from Malaysia in 1965 set the stage for a remarkable transformation and the birth of a new era. As the island nation found itself navigating uncharted waters, it seized the opportunity to forge an identity that was uniquely its own. Amidst the uncertainties and challenges of separation, the Singaporean government embarked on a mission to unite its diverse population under a shared sense of nationhood. This journey culminated in the first National Day celebrations on 9 August 1966, one year after the separation from Malaysia. It was a momentous occasion that not only marked Singapore's independence but also kindled the spirit of unity and pride among its citizens. But this was only the beginning of an inspirational tale. Ever since the first celebration, Singapore has been on a mission to light up the path of its national identity. The city-state has thrown in a mix of ideas to keep Singaporeans connected to their roots. But there is one particular event that steals the spotlight every time. Yes, it's the annual National Day Parade, or NDP as it is affectionately known. Imagine this, a giant outdoor bash that draws in hordes of proud Singaporeans, waving their flags like they're leading a colorful symphony. And guess when this epic spectacle goes down? You got it. Every August 9, a day to mark Singapore's independence and toast to its diverse and vibrant spirit. So, who's the mastermind behind this extravaganza? It's none other than the Singapore Armed Forces. They roll up their sleeves for over half a year, crafting this visual feast from scratch. But that's not all. Brace yourself for a cascade of events throughout August. Think lively community gatherings, pulsating with the heartbeat of the nation, and the National Day Rally where the Prime Minister takes the stage to chat about where things are headed. It's a month-long celebration that paints a picture of Singapore's journey, reminding everyone of the story they share and the destiny they're carving out together. And when it's time for the National Day Parade in Singapore, things get seriously flashy. Every year, the show is a mix of cool military and civilian processions, massive cultural performances that'll make your jaw drop, grand parades flaunting the national colors, as well as brilliant fireworks displays that light up the night sky. But guess what? These dazzling spectacles have been a tradition since way back when Singapore was under the colonial rule. Back then, they used to throw grand parties to celebrate British monarchs' birthdays and coronations. But here's the kicker. While those colonial parades were all about flexing the muscles of the British Empire, the modern NDPs are like the nation's megaphone, shouting out its dreams and aspirations to everyone. Back in the day right after Singapore declared its independence, the NDPs were like turbocharged booster shots of pride and duty for the fresh new citizens of the fledgling nation. The government then was all about building a rugged society, which basically meant they wanted folks who were hardworking, ready to sacrifice, and willing to tough it out for the country. Those early NDPs from the 1960s had themes like, rugged and vigorous Singapore, rugged society, and youth and discipline. They even battled through thunderstorms just to prove their ruggedness during one of these parades. That's some dedication. Fast forward to the 1970s, and the vibe changed. The parades were all about celebrating Singapore's real MVPs, the people who made the economy tick like a finely tuned machine. Themes like, work for security and prosperity, productivity and progress, and self-reliance, were a big shout-out to the workforce, and contingents from various civilian groups took center stage. Shipyard workers, bird park staff, and even the folks from Singapore Airlines marched proudly, reminding everyone of their vital role in the nation's success story. And then, the 1980s arrived, and the NDPs went full on party mode. No more stiff marching and routine dances. Now it was all about throwing a colossal cultural bash with mind-blowing visuals, heart-pounding stunts, and dazzling displays. The parades were turned into blockbuster shows, complete with fireworks, laser displays, and massive flashcard shows that spelled out epic stories. Yet, the rhythmic heartbeat of Singapore's National Day parades wasn't complete without its own melodies. It was in 1984 that the first notes of this musical journey were struck with the introduction of the NDP theme songs. It all began with, Stand Up for Singapore, a call for unity that resonated across the nation. But that was just the beginning. In 1985, another song took center stage, Count on Me Singapore, a promise woven in music, performed at the 1986 parade, 
We Are Singapore, echoed through the years of 1987 and 1988, and, One People, One Nation, One Singapore, captured the spirit of 1990. But then 1998 marked a turning point in the symphony of Singapore's National Day Parade. A new theme song emerged, but it wasn't just a song. It was a connection, a bond. It was, home. Composed by the talented Dick Lee and voiced by the soulful Kit Chan, this melody didn't just capture the hearts of the nation. It held them in its embrace, echoing through the years. Fast forward to today, the NDP is now like a rock concert and grand carnival all rolled into one. It remains the nation's biggest annual bash, where the entire country comes together to celebrate its journey, its struggles, and its victories. Now that's what you call a nationwide party with a purpose. But there's more. Let us now dive into the nitty-gritty of how these National Day parades have been shaking things up. In the beginning, the event was usually held at two prime spots, the Padang and the National Stadium. But then, in 2006, the old National Stadium waved goodbye to make room for a new one, and the party scene shifted to the float at Marina Bay. But let's rewind to the very first NDP. It was a simple march past held at the Padang, the historic field opposite City Hall. Think about it. Around 23,000 folks getting together for a 90-minute celebration, starting off with President Yusuf Ishaq's grand entrance at 9 in the morning. Yet, things changed up after nine parades at the Padang. In 1975, the government decided to spread the love and kicked off many celebrations across the island instead of centralizing all in a single venue. The goal was to bring the celebrations closer to the folks, right at their doorsteps. Imagine the scene in 1975. The parade was spread across 13 venues like Ferrer Park, Jurong, and Toa Peo, making sure everyone got a taste of the action. The Prime Minister and his contingent spread themselves out too, mingling with the crowds. It was like the whole nation was having a party, not just in one spot, but all over the island. Fast forward a bit, and things switched back to one central parade in 1984. Why the switch? Well, it turns out duplicating these parades was pretty pricey and super tricky to coordinate, especially for live TV. However, the excitement was still very much alive and kicking, especially when they rolled out the big guns such as the massive mobile column of 200 vehicles. Then, in 2010, the organizers thought, hey, let's mix it up again. Enter the Heartland celebrations, where the parade was expanded to five suburban spots. Chua Chu Kong, Bishan, Yunos, Senkong, and Woodlands all got a taste of the action. It was all about bringing the parade vibes to the people, right where they live. These Heartland celebrations were packed with performances, cool activities, fireworks, and the impressive mobile column too. But wait, there's more. The NDPs didn't just stay on the streets, they invaded the television screens too. Since the very first NDP in 1966, people have been able to catch all the action live on TV, with some upgrades over the years, from black and white to color, and even online streaming since 1994. And guess what? The celebrations translated into everyday life with nationalist gear like t-shirts, badges, stickers, and mugs that'll have folks showing off their Singaporean spirit. And since 1988, everyone can hang the national flag outside their homes as part of the celebration. This is a little visual way of shouting, hey, we're proud to be a Singaporean. Trust me, when National Day is around the corner, these flags pop up all over the place, with housing estates turning it into a friendly competition of who can deck out their space with the most creative flag decorations. It's like a friendly, patriotic showdown. So there you have it, the journey of NDPs, from simple march pasts to all-out celebrations that bring the whole nation together. It's a party, it's a parade, it's a cultural extravaganza, and it's all about celebrating Singapore in the most epic way possible. But did you know that there is another indispensable event that forms a big part of the NDP festivities? Yes, it is the National Day Rally Speech. Think of it as Singapore's version of the US President's State of the Union Address, but with a unique twist. From the very first NDP back in 1966, this speech by the Prime Minister has been a highlight. It's a nationwide motivational pep talk that's broadcast live on the radio, TV, and more recently, the internet. This isn't just any old speech, it's all about setting the agenda and firing up the nation. Think of it as the Prime Minister saying, all right, folks, here's where we're at, here's where we're going, and here's how we're going to get there. Now, here's the scoop. Back in the day, this speech was behind closed doors. But in 1971, Singapore decided to share the good stuff and started broadcasting it for everyone to hear. 
This speech is a real game changer. The Prime Minister reviews the country's achievements, zeroes in on the challenges, and lays out the policies to tackle them. And it's not just a one-way streak, it's a call to action. Singaporeans are reminded to stand united, work hard, and keep national values like meritocracy and multiculturalism in mind. So, who's been dishing out these speeches? They are the founding Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew from 1966 to 1989. His successor, Mr. Go Chok Tong from 1990 to 2004. And the current Prime Minister, Mr. Li Xian Long, from 2005 to now. Each of them brought their own style to the stage, using metaphors, inspiring words, and real-life tales to get their messages across. Mr. Li Kuan Yu was like the straight shooter, speaking his mind, using easy-to-understand and masterful language. He'd remind folks that life wasn't always a smooth ride, but facing challenges was good for the soul. Mr. Go Chok Tong was more open and consultative in his approach, tossing in hilarious colloquial dialect expressions to lighten things up. And then we have the current Prime Minister, Mr. Li Xian Long, whose words flow gently, like a calm river. He's all about spotlighting ordinary Singaporeans who've walked extraordinary paths, inspiring others. So, what's the big deal with these speeches? Well, they're not just words, they're a chance for the country to reflect, come together, and keep the Singaporean spirit alive. It's a moment to remind everyone of their identity, their potential, and their shared journey as a nation. So, the next time you hear about the National Day rally speech, know that it's not just a speech. It's a call to action, a boost of motivation, and a celebration of what Singapore stands for. Undoubtedly, Singapore's journey from independence to a robust national identity is remarkable. Yet, amidst this evolution, there's an untold tale of another national pride, Singapore Airlines. Watch this video to find out more.